Hi ho there and welcome to Why Am I Obsessed With This? The show that covers shows that basically make people ask the question, Dan, why do you keep showing this to me? What do you see in this? And nobody needs to watch Capote 10 days in a row. I'm your host, Daniel's sense of nostalgia and memory. That's why I'm dressed in the costume from the last show I was in in Minnesota. It was a Star Wars musical. You're jealous, aren't you? Hey, do you like these? These are some shows I've done over the years. Some good ones in there. All of them fun. So basically, we're just going to be covering anything that I delved into a little too deep, where I basically got to the point where I was forced to ask myself the question, why am I obsessed with this? So today I want to talk about one of the mainstays of YouTube culture, and that's something I'm sure a lot of us are familiar with, a little independent video series called Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. What's your favorite idea? Mine is being creative. Now there's a lot of reasons to like this. It's macabre, it has the juxtaposition of being, you know, having these bright cheery Muppets along with these very, very intense graphic violent scenes. Uh, it's got a lot to say about commercialism and I feel like it's just on the whole a very well paced and well made series. But that doesn't explain why I had to watch it seven times in a row the first time I saw it. So anyway, the first time I saw it, it was probably on some Reddit WTF forum or something like that. And I thought, oh man, this is great. I, 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 it's, it's wacky, it's creepy. And you know, it really just spoke to me on some kind of core level, but that's about as far into it as I went. Years later, uh, hanging out with a friend of mine and he's telling me about how he doesn't really watch Netflix anymore or Hulu. He's basically given up on all streaming services and he's pretty much transferred all of his watching time to YouTube. And this was very surprising to me at the time because, you know, I wasn't very connected with the YouTube culture. I didn't know that there were actual filmmakers like putting out real things on there. So, you know, he asked me, hey, have you, have you th heard, seen this thing called DHMIS? And I'm like, <laughs> obvious. Yeah, no, no, no. I have, that's, uh, those letters do not mean anything to me. So he pulls it up in about two minutes in. I'm like, oh, oh, I know this. I love this. And he said, yeah, have you seen all of them? And I said, there are more. <laughs> So we took a deep dive, we went through all of it, and at the end he asked me what I thought of it, what I thought I had seen, my impressions, um, anything I, I really picked up on. And so you know, I kind of told him, like, I got the impression of like a story involving the making of like a children's type, educational, fun, colorful show. Go and collect some leaves and sticks and arrange them into your favorite color. That kept getting subverted by other interests that weren't as wholesome. Color. And you know, he seemed pretty satisfied with this explanation and then he said, okay, now I'm going to show you something to take this one level deeper. And that is when I was introduced to this guy. That's right, Matt Pat, this one's about you. So the next thing he pulls up for me is this video right here, which introduced me to a plucky little YouTuber that I had never heard of before. Welcome to Film Theory, the YouTube version of your uncle who thinks that everything is a conspiracy. Why yes, Uncle Bob, I do think it's strange that you never see a baby pigeon. And after I got over the initial cadence of his voice, which I immediately realized was for presentation reasons, I realized that this was a good researcher and a good essay writer. But last, and probably most importantly, is the amazing attention to detail these videos have. The number of callbacks and easter eggs in every episode is astounding. Some of them you have to practically watch frame by frame to even see. And he was able to expand upon details in this that I had completely glossed over in the, even in the multiple times of viewing it. And what was so surprising about that to me was not just that these creators had put in all of these tiny little details that really fleshed out an entirely new level of the story, but that there were people actually willing to 
deep dive and hunt for that information to actually synthesize a greater meaning to all of this. And that was when I was introduced to the concepts of ARGs and basically any non-traditional medium that involves research and interaction with its audience. I didn't know that there was an audience that was willing to put this level of work into something that they were viewing. And so, because I was introduced to film theory, I was then introduced to game theory, which were, <laughs> and so if it weren't for DHMIS, I wouldn't have known about theorists, which wouldn't have led me to ARGs, which wouldn't have led to me, you know, doing deep dives on things like Five Nights and Freddy's and Dad. Hi, Dad. You know, so really, what DHMIS did for me on a personal level, in addition to it just being a fantastic series, it's just that it taught me that I didn't need to simplify my content anymore. That I could in fact even make entire puzzles, have entire archives of hidden content, and people would actually be willing to put in the work to do a deep dive for it and to be able to share their experience to others. That's the other thing that really captivates me about this type of viewing is that there is that there are people in the theorist community who don't necessarily want to do the footwork, but they follow the people who are putting those pieces together. So it becomes more of a community viewing that really just deepens the entire experience of the interaction between creator and audience member. And I think that this kind of art form is going to only be increasing in popularity and in complexity from here on out. So really what this did was open the door for everything. It, it basically taught me that there was, an there was an entirely new kind of content that was geared toward my overthinking side of my brain and would let me put any weirdness I wanted out there as long as there was a reason behind it. So, thank you, Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. Please check out that, uh, that series in the description below. Also check out all the theory channels. These guys put a lot of work into their videos and they really deserve a good look. And I promise I got used to his voice in like five seconds if that's something that annoys you. Sorry, Matt, Pat, but you make jokes about it, so I'm allowed to. Uh, 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 uh. So that about covers it for this week's episode of Why Am I Obsessed With This? I'm Nostalgia. And this has been a great time. <laughs>